I will start by creating new design and uh, in every design where I know some dimensions I want to use, I go to parameters, change parameters, and I add those parameters to the design. So you click on user parameters, you create a name, and I know the height of the model I want to create, and it will be 30 millimeters. And uh, I know the diameter of the model, and it will be called D, and it will be 70 millimeters. I will use it right now. Sorry, let's. So, are you are you yeah. planning that they follow you? So um, that they are following the same steps, or or you are just going to tell a, a general? I think I just will walk through the designing process because okay. find uh, like you don't need to repeat after me. Okay. Or anything. And since the recording will be available, yes, okay. I think it will be easier to repeat after. Okay, perfect. So, a few things you might need to check before you start your designs in Fusion is preferences. And uh, first one, which I find very, very helpful, is capture design history is general design this box capture design history and uh, next one we probably need to unmark i like to unmark uh, auto project geometry on active sketch plane i really want to have control on what is on my sketch and what is not and design history basically this is this timeline so i designed it beforehand and if I press play, you will see how design was done step by step. Sorry, here. So, uh, first we need to create sketch, and I want to put it on this plane. It appears here in sketches, and I want to look onto it. And here you have sketch grid, and you can turn it on and off in the sketch palette. And one thing I really recommend you to unmark is this one, snap to grid, because this one, when you create any object, will try to snap to those grid crossings. And I think it's really annoying. It creates unnecessary constraints and try to avoid that. So unmark. And sketch grid, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't really like to use it, but it's totally up to you. So I'll start by creating the outline of the my profile. And I want it to be uh, 30 millimeters high and i can choose it type it in the box of dimension and use it as a parameter here and here i can make it divided by two and press enter so i create a rectangle on the plane then i want to create a construction line in here fusion by default create auto creates constraints so this line i just made is uh, perpendicular to the rectangle and now i can define distance between left border and this line and let's say it will be 7 millimeters Okay, and now I can create, finish my profile. I want to specify a few distances here. So this one will be two millimeters. This one. This one.
So what I did, I uh, create locked all the sketch uh, elements with some constraints. So I specified the um, distances between point and line of my rectangle, and I specified the angle between those lines of everything you can make by simply press D on your keyboard or create dimension. Sketch dimension. So uh, at any point I can change any distance I like, for example. And after I finished my profile, I can just click finish sketch. And from this profile, I want to create uh, an object. And I want this time use a revolve function in Fusion. So I have my profile, click revolve. I select profile, I select axis uh, around what this profile will be rotated. And Simply press OK. So I created a body which has profile of my object. And after that, sorry, Gleb, one moment. I I, I am receiving a a notification that this meeting is going to end in ten minutes. So uh, just in case, I'm going to add in the chat. Uh, another meeting room, my own meeting room. So copy and paste it just in case we, it shouldn't be, but just in case we, uh, I mean, this, this session ends, you can join this, this other one. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know what, what's the problem because uh, it should be. Actually, I, I might be using Zoom from my personal account and Okay. It might be that there is a time limit. Okay. Limit. Yeah, it might be so. So anyway, if you are in in all the people who is attending this meeting, I have put in the chat another meeting room, and if this one is uh, is stop, you can move to the other one. Okay. I will open immediately. Actually, uh, if you don't mind, um, probably it takes a little bit too much my resources to speak and design at the same time. Uh, I think it will be better if I switch to my already existing design and I will just move through the design history and uh, I'll explain what I did on every step. So I finished on this one where I created a profile from a sketch and this sketch you can see right here. I can go back to it in timeline. You can see all the dimensions and profile I created. After that, uh, I created a body from it. And then I created another sketch, which will be the um, main part of the uh, tolerance test, this one, the red part. After that, I extruded it to be a cylinder. I made a Boolean operation, combine in here. I selected my cylinder as a target body. I selected my created profile as a two bodies and operation cut. After that, I created an axis uh, around, actually, here it is, it's construction line. This one I really want to encourage you to use because construction lines and planes are very helpful when you do complicated design. So this one I created by pressing construct and access through uh, cylinder contours. So if you press this one and just press the outline of your cylinder, it will create the axis. We can actually make it here. So it creates access right in the middle of my object. And all construction uh, planes and access are here under construction folder. 
so you can turn them on and off as you need so after that i used a really neat feature it's called circle pattern so i chose uh my as my object the operation cut i did in previous step so you can basically copy features in your design so this one i used to cut through the body so if i repeat it now i can uh, create pattern circular pattern and this one So I'll go back one step in timeline. Then create pattern. Here you can select bodies from here. You can select uh, design features from here. So I want to select this combined feature I did earlier, and. A select axis the axis i created before so here you can change the number of your parts will be created i can go with three just to demonstrate how it works and i actually will just delete this feature and go forward to timeline so now i just cut uh the body next thing i did is I created a pattern out of uh, this body I created from profile. I used the same circular pattern feature. It created four new bodies out of this one. And they are already placed in the correct uh, place. Next, I unmarked uh, I, all the bodies I created and I used the option which is very, very nice for 3D printing and design 3D printing parts. Uh, it's called offset face. Uh, basically, uh, you just select all the faces you want to offset, which will be somehow related to other 3D printed part. You go to uh, offset face, and here you can set the distance negative zero point two, let's say so to demonstrate it even more minus one so you can see this one became bigger so there is more space between body number six and the uh, main body and uh, basically my tip is design in correct uh, dimensions and then use offset face to add this offset for 3d printing so your parts will fit correctly if you add the offset in your design it's really easy to forget on which sketch you added it or you can just miss and your uh, parts won't fit properly uh, this feature of set face you just add it after you finished your design to all the uh, faces which will be touching or somehow related okay. thank you and sorry for the interruption so i stopped by uh, explaining how the you can use offset face function and it's really helpful and if you design anything for 3d printing and you have parts related one to another you basically need to use this function and this test basically helps you to understand which tolerance you should use for your 3d printer so i applied this offset face function to every set of faces on the model uh this step is 0 0.1 millimeters so uh if we go to the finished design and we 
can turn on. Sorry. Analysis here. You can see that distance between parts gradually increases from here clockwise to here. So in here, after this, I just uh, made the parts look a little bit nicer. I added some chamfer on the bodies. And one thing to mention, chamfer uh, looks much better on 3D printed parts if it's facing up like that. If you, there is a similar function, fillet, which you can apply, but it looks much worse when you 3D print it because the layers, they don't look as smooth. Uh, but we can take a look on that in the slicer, probably. So I applied chamfers to all the parts. Then I created another sketch for this hex key shaft. So basically you can use a hex key to try to rotate the part after you printed it. Then I extruded it. So there is a place there, a slot there, hex slot. And then I used uh, create components from bodies command and I uh, put all my bodies to one component here so I can 3D print export it from Fusion as a one model. So to do it, you go to tools, you go to make. Uh, it was already selected, so but I can actually clear this selection. So make. If I just click on the body, it will create a model just from the body. If, and if I click on the component, it will uh, create STL file from all the bodies in my component. And here you can change the refillment of the triangles. It basically, uh, how many triangles your model use and we don't need really high refillment here. And output, I'm going to send it to Prusa Slicer directly from here. Uh, or you can just unmark this box and save it as an STL file and it will be ready for 3D printing. So in Prusa Slicer, we can go to slicing. We can wait and see what slices. And we have our model. And if I go down on the layers, you can see that where there was zero tolerance, it melted the model inside the body. And then there is already 0 0.1 millimeter tolerance here, 0 0.2 here, 0 0.3 here, 0 0.4 here. And of course, you can use finer steps, for example, uh, uh, half of that and you can really fine tune uh, your design according to the 3D printer capabilities of yours. Basically after that it is ready to print and after you printed it you can see that those probably will be melted together and starting from 0 0.2 you most likely will be able to rotate this part uh, relative to this, at least with 0 0.2 millimeters using hex key, 0 0.3 millimeters for sure, I would say you can rotate it by hand. If not, you really need to calibrate 3D printer. And uh, this part is really important to know because depending on this, uh, you can put adjustments on your design and you don't need to spend time after to post-process your parts. Like, of course you can send some one or two slots, but if you have many parts in your design, many slots, uh, it will take forever, even for fairly simple part. And it's much better to design already 
according to printer capabilities. So, oh, so sorry, one, one question or clarification. So this tolerant test is used in the beginning when you calibrate your printer to uh, check the capabilities of your, uh, of your printer, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's mainly to check the, how close yeah. you can have the walls. Yeah. Basically, yeah. basically okay. yes, if you uh, know beforehand, you just print a part like that. Uh, I think you can find similar ones on Thingiverse. Uh, you just print one or two of those and you know how to design later on. Different printers would have different capabilities. Yes, so of course. And it depends uh, also on the calibration of your printer, right? Yes, it can change the time. And if you feel like your parts don't fit well together, even though you tested it before, you probably need to calibrate printer. So, yes.